Hey there, it's Ben Housel here, and we are gonna do a little bit of a triple unboxing here today. So basically my 13 inch uh, MacBook Pro um, has kind of come to the end of its uh, useful life. It's starting to struggle a bit uh, with some of the editing I'm doing to turn around projects as quickly as I would like to. Um, so we are taking this away um, and we are gonna unbox the new 16 inch MacBook Pro. Um, I also have here to unbox today the kind of required USB Thunderbolt stuff, um, obviously um, for my my older Thunderbolt and USB ports. I'm gonna to need to still plug those in and work with those. So we've kind of got all the adapters we need there. Uh, and then because the 16 inch monitor is gonna be great, but also I do love working on my 27 inch monitor. So we have here the Philips uh, 27 inch monitor that hopefully uh, from the reviews on Amazon is gonna be great. And we'll run through, unbox everything, have a quick look read as few of the instructions as possible uh, before plugging things in and uh, firing up. So hopefully by the end of this, we will have a kind of quick preview of my new editing setup um, for the tutorials. But we're gonna jump right into the star of the show, which is obviously gonna be the uh, MacBook Pro. This, I kind of tracked its progress. Um, it came all the way from China. And we will dive in here and kind of have a look at what we've got. So, and here we go. So we've got a kind of uh, wrapping uh, here. We'll get this all off. In fact, I don't think we need scissors. This is Apple, of course. So I can see there's a kind of special tab to pull that we can jump out from here. Okay, we will tidy up the plastic later. And uh, we've got my little Sony RX100 to kind of get the close-ups here. So basically, uh, first look for me, um, there's no Apple store where I currently live. Um, so this is the first time I unboxed one of these. So we'll slide this open. Nice sturdy packaging, and then nice little tab to slip the, the laptop out from. And this doesn't uh, feel like 16 inches, it feels very kind of small uh, when I first kind of get it out there. It doesn't feel like the older, kind of much thicker 15 inch laptops, which I have used uh, in the past. We have the USB-C uh, cable, which looks nice and long. Um, and then they're designed in California, a little booklet with some instructions uh, in here. MacBook Pro in various languages. There seems to be uh, some unnecessary padding in here, Apple. All right, we'll throw that to one side. Luckily, uh, I'm only buying one of these every six years, so hopefully uh, this will be the only Mac packaging I open for another six years, we'll see. Power adapter, uh, USB-C, obviously, uh, with some uh, nice wrapping around it, and that is pretty much everything in the box, so very simple. Oh, and of course, uh, some Apple stickers. So we'll close this box and we'll get this opened up. So you can see from the laptop here, we've just got kind of little tabs for unpeeling everything, um, which is kind of nice. So super simple, super slick. And we've got the space gray kind of laptop here. Let's open this up a little bit more protective packaging. I'm sure I've kept all the packaging from all the Macs I've ever got, and it's firing up right away as soon as I have flipped it open, which makes me feel like I now need to uh, plug it into the power. But you can see straight out of the box, we are fired up. English is the main language. Press the return key. All right, it's on US English. I'm going down Use one British to- British English is the main language. Press the return key. Okay, we are on British English. And we'll hit enter. It says return, but we're hitting enter. And we may as well kind of fire through all this and kind of let it set up. Mac OS contains a built-in screen reader called VoiceOver. If you know how to use VoiceOver, press the command key while you press touch ID three times at the right end of the touch bar. All right, we're not using VoiceOver to set up the Mac, but that is good. Okay, so now we've got to enter in some uh, Wi-Fi details. Okay, so we are logged onto the Wi-Fi network here. We're gonna go through some of the data and privacy stuff. Uh, I'm not gonna transfer any information from my other Mac. I'm gonna kind of do a clean install of all the software. 
So we'll click continue. I am gonna enter my Apple ID. So I do like this, I log in with my Apple ID and obviously it uh, shows me that I've requested to log in um, on my other devices, uh, so I can allow that. Uh, that's given me a verification code here to type in. Okay, we've got to agree to, them, to some license stuff here. And I am gonna set my computer up here. All right, so there we go. My fingerprint can now unlock my Mac. And we will set this up later. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go for the, the kind of classic look here for this. We'll click through. Let's click continue. So from opening up the box to kind of getting to this stage seems very, very kind of scarily smooth. So we are straight into Catalina now. I've got some software to install on here, but basically what I really want to get to, <laughs> I thought the stars were dead pixels. There are, the screen is such high resolution that the stars in my picture looked like dead pixels. That would be bad. We'll actually just close this down for the moment and move on to unboxing uh, the Philips monitor that we've, we've got here. So let's move that to one side. Slide here and here to lift this up a little bit before we slice along. So kind of leave all the details for the monitor uh, and everything below here. Let's tip this like this. So just unboxing this, the monitor is kind of tipping out flat. It's actually quite heavy. Um, so basically uh, we've got the monitor here and then in here. We have some construction to do here. Uh, there is a nice kind of sturdy uh, heavy base uh, for the monitor here. Uh, another part of the, the base in here as well. USB-C to USB port. Um, there's lots of cables in here. So USB-C to USB-C, which is great. One of the reasons I bought this monitor was that I can plug it straight into the MacBook Pro. Monitor cable uh, in here and then uh, HDMI cable, power supply, and instructions. So basically, let's have a little look at what we've got here. So basically, it looks like we've got the, the kind of monitor pack. Uh, there's some warnings here saying, please do what you're told by the instructions. So we're gonna put a whole bunch of these cables uh, to one side. We'll keep the USB-C one available uh, for when we get things fired up. And then we have the mount here. Um, I got big warnings to make sure I follow the instructions, um, so I will follow the instructions. All right, so we're going for the, the quick start. So the instructions say, leave it in here uh, while we mount the mount. Um, but I'm guessing we have to kind of get this cover off. Let's take this out. So let's lay this down here. So we're still technically in the box. We can now see the kind of back of the monitor. So uh, there is a Phillips screwdriver kind of socket at the bottom here, but also, uh, you know, a tightener as well. So I don't actually need a, a screwdriver to do this, which is kind of handy. It tells me step one is to Pop this in here, nice. Step two is to screw this in. Screwing in, that feels nice and tight, not too tight. And then step three, base is screwed on, pretty easy to assemble. This is gonna pop in here and that has clipped in. We can stand this up and take this bad boy. So the height of this adjusts actually quite smoothly without, uh, there's no kind of clips or anything doing that. So I can just pull it up and down right from the monitor. It also uh, kind of twizzles as well. So we're ready to get the monitor uh, connected to the MacBook Pro. Um, and before I do that, I just wanted to kind of show 
uh, or test one thing, um, which I believe is true, which is that the MacBook Pro will charge through the monitor from the USB-C port, as well as being able to share its uh, kind of connection there. So I'm gonna get this USB-C cable uh, unhooked. So there are four USB-C ports in the MacBook Pro, the 16 inch. Um, so basically uh, this is gonna use one of them, uh, but another reason for getting this monitor and uh, I'm gonna test it as well, I kind of leave some notes in the bottom, um, is that it's also got connectivity uh, for USB as well. So it acts as a hub, a USB hub as well. So you can uh, save yourself some money on USB hubs if you buy a monitor that has original USB hubs uh, kind of built into them. So you can still plug in your old devices and hard drives and stuff like that. And uh, we'll maybe do a little test of that in this video um, as well. So I'm gonna just rotate this round so we can tilt it carefully. I can see there's one USB-C port in here. So there's one USB-C port, there's two USB ports. There's an audio out um, in here as well. So let's plug the USB-C in. So that's in there. So I'll twist this round. So I basically uh, got the power for this here. My monitor is on. I'm gonna drop in the USB-C to there. My Mac is charging, um, but it's not showing up on the monitor. So it says no video input. Okay. So apparently not all USB-C cables are created equal. Uh, the one that came with the Mac uh, would not get my monitor to work uh, for some reason or other, uh, but the one that came with uh, the monitor uh, now works fine. So we can see we've got the, the monitor up, the MacBook Pro uh, connected. Uh, looks pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with that. So we've got the, the monitor set up um, using the USB cable, the black USB cable that came with the, the Philips uh, TV. And basically also, as well as being plugged into the monitor, the MacBook Pro is also charging as well. So basically we've got charge we have one cable, less cables. That's definitely always good uh, to have less cables. Um, now the next step uh, is to kind of get my wireless keyboard connected and also to get Final Cut Pro installed on here as well as uh, some of the Adobe apps uh, which I use, so InDesign and Photoshop and Illustrator and that kind of stuff. Um, and then uh, we will be ready to rock and roll. Uh, one thing I think I'll do before we do uh, kind of cut off here is just have a look at um, the USB ports on the back to see if I can actually connect a, a hard drive um, or a USB uh, into those USB ports. So let's spin this dude back round again. I'm not really so worried about the monitor anymore, but what I am interested in is uh, whether the USB functions um, while I have this plugged in, because that'll be great for um, some of my other external devices. Yeah, we have a blue flashing light. And you can see here uh, on my Mac that the hard drive's plugged in uh, through the monitor as well. So again, less cables for USB hubs and stuff like that. It means I can plug in my one USB uh, for the monitor and then have some of the peripherals um, that I want to come out of it uh, come directly um, out of here. So things like my, my sound card, um, for my headphones and for the microphones going to my computer can all come out of this so I won't have to kind of have endless cables uh, in there, although I will have to have a couple of other uh, kind of cables running in as well. So there's one last box to kind of unbox here. Uh, basically is uh, I think my peripherals. Um, so we have the scissors uh, back here. And in here we have the USB C to digital AV adapter. So basically in here, the USB-C plugin um, to digital AV, so to HDMI and also to USB as well. Um, so I can kind of plug things in on the road. I do also need to get a SD card reader um, adapter as well, but I think I'm gonna get that from Amazon. And then I also have uh, Thunderbolt 2 uh, drives as well. I've got the USB-C to Thunderbolt 2 uh, adapter as well so that I can plug in uh, my RAID and that kind of stuff. So cheaper than upgrading it. Um, I have also been looking at some USB-C enclosures for some of my solid state uh, hard drives as well. So that should be a kind of cheaper way of upgrading some of those external solid state drives rather than having to 
go for all USB-C stuff straight from the get-go, but it's definitely like an extra few hundred bucks in terms of peripherals to kind of make sure you can plug in all your old stuff um, into your uh, new MacBook Pro. So that's an overview of my setup. I'll leave the, the links below. The monitor looks super crisp, super clean. Um, I'm really happy with that. I'm really happy with the fact that I only need one cable to plug in. Um, and then I also have my wireless keyboard um, as well, which I'll use. So this will kind of be um, just the computer uh, when I'm working um, at my desk. So computer and monitor. Uh, so with the second display, and then when I'm on the road, I've got the nice larger kind of 16 inch uh, monitor as well, which definitely uh, looks nice. It definitely kind of gives me that little bit more real estate with Final Cut Pro, with Adobe apps when I'm presenting teaching on the road. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to kind of see how this performs once I actually give it a good road test. So thanks for watching. Uh, it's probably a bit of a patchy kind of unboxing of things. Um, and basically uh, I will, keep you updated as to how things go. Obviously now I'm gonna be using the latest version of Final Cut Pro, which I wasn't uh, before. I was still hesitating on updating my older iMac, um, although I'd updated my kind of uh, older 13 inch MacBook Pro. Um, so we'll see how that goes as well. I've got some plugins to move across. I know there's some printer peripheral kind of software um, that I do use from time to time, but I might have to work around that um, with an older MacBook Pro uh, that I have um, just to kind of do some uh, printing to discs. Believe it or not, I still make DVDs and Blu-rays, which is kind of a strange thing to be doing in 2020, um, but there we go. So this is a brand new laptop uh, and we will see uh, how it goes. I'll keep you updated. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.